It's November 14th, and finally, tonight's the night that I get to not only install the Intel Optane SSD 900P, which you saw me do on camera last week, but also use it now that I have not just the cable, but this adapter card that's going to go in the PCI slot that'll let me actually use the device. Let me just show you here. Here's the ZND server. Here's the PCIe slot. I'm leaving a Samsung 960 Pro in the motherboard. We're going to use the PCIe slot uh, along with the Samsung 850 Evo. These are all VMFS data stores I have ready to go. Now, the adapter is in the box, so it's time to open the box. Now, looking inside the case, you'll see it's a little bit tight. I'm going to go over some of the basics of working with the Xeon D and some tips on how to uh, make sure you have adequate room and clearance. All right. This ships from Wired Zone. Let's have a look at the device here. Here we go. The AOC SLG3, whoops, there we go, dash 2E4. Not the easiest to remember name. The point is there's no R at the end. R at the end only works with very few systems. Patrick Kennedy over at Certain Home has covered that. This particular device should work. All right, what's in the box? of parts here. We've got a tall back plate, which is going to be useless for me because I have a half height system, and that means we're going to leave the short plate on there. That's fine. Go ahead and break the seal. Let's have a look at the card within. Not concerned about humidity, and you may have just heard a silica bag fall out of the packaging. All right, let's have a very close look in 4K at this card, including the printed circuit board. Designed in the US, there's the part number again, and then a revision 1.02. Not sure if that's significant because I never owned any prior versions or any product like this. So here we have our connections here. And I'm going to use one of them today, or another in the future, that'll go over to the M2 slot on the motherboard. Okay, here's the back of the PCB, which no one will really see. Back to the front. Anything interesting to look at here? Jumpers or lights. This talks about uh, this jumper right here. No idea what's going on here. And here's a pad with nothing on it. All right, now looking at the connector here, if you've never dealt with U.2 before, you've got a little squeeze release there. And looking at the mechanism, you'll see, well, it's rather hard to see, but yes, there's an internal release. So let's go ahead and give this a try. Now it's more obvious what's going on. You heard a little click. And you can see the tab is sticking up right there. Push on the top to move the tab down just a little bit. And there's a fair amount of friction. This isn't going anywhere, but yeah, nice solid locking mechanism that I like. All right, time to install in the system. Let's see if we can get a little better camera angle going here before I even really get started. I wanna point out in this particular chassis, you wanna back this screw out that goes above the PCI E slot. You don't need to remove the screw entirely, just back it out a few turns. And now you have more clearance as we go on in and remove this back plate. Now there's no longer a screw protruding there. All right. Now that I've removed the blank back plate, we can have a look at installing this card. It should work fine. I've used various other products like the Supermicro AOC SLG3 2M2, 
to use M.2 devices, and that's two of them. And you do have to turn on, in the BIOS, bifurcation 4x4x4x4 by four by four by four from the factory defaulted by 16 to get that to work. Now the Intel Optane P4800X that I uh, had on loan for a bit, that requires you to put the in the PCIe settings area of the BIOS, the same area where you turn on bifurcation, you also want to change the UEFI mode to avoid a BIOS hang. All right, this card, I have no idea what considerations are. I didn't see anything specific in the manual, but I would say instead of the by four by four by four by four bifurcation I have going on right now, I may end up just needing to turn that off because there's a PLX chip here that's gonna handle multiple import inputs, the two inputs. I don't believe it's relying on bifurcation at all. So let's put this in. Plenty of clearance, eh, kind of. So this motherboard requires, you're really supposed to be pulling out the whole motherboard, meaning pulling out these connectors, sliding the motherboard back, installing a PCIe card. But if you pull off a backplate, it's very easy to install cards in the PCIe slot. So if you're just doing testing for a few hours or something, and it doesn't matter too much about the backplate, that's your little tip. Or you just very carefully kind of jiggle until you get it lined up with a little bit of extra effort you can get it seated in the slot without having to remove things. Now I am struggling a bit here and you probably can't really see too well on the camera, but there you go. Just had to wiggle until it cleared. Now that I've cleared this, it's straight in. I can exert even pressure on both sides. It snaps down. Back plate is lined up. Ready to do the hold down screw. And I'm ready to then wire it up and power up the system. We don't want cross threading going on there. Get it lined up nicely, then tighten the screw. And now I can actually tighten that screw in the back as well. Great. Looking good. Fits in just fine. Of course it fits in. And it's seated evenly in the slot. No pins are showing. So now it's time for a little bit of cable routing. How about I go wide angle again? So on this wide angle shot here, you'll see I have plenty of cable length. And in my last video, I neglected to show you power. So when you have this cable, you need to get power from nearby SATA, right? And it's keyed, a little hard to go wrong. Just plug it in. The other end goes in the back of the drive which is also keyed. So you really can't go wrong with the connector type. It's just kind of bulky. That's it. All right. Now cable routing. I'm gonna go through this hole. And we're way long, so I'm going to actually keep some of the slack up there. Come on down the front and do something like this. I don't know. Okay, that seems to work. Okay, it's clicked in. It's out of the way visually. And there's really no problem. Uh, let's see. So say I was doing a public demo or a user group or whatever, I'd probably want to do a little more cable management or tuck that out of the way a little bit better. So let me take a moment to do that. If I simply give a little more slack, I may be able to hook that over with my finger on top of that 2.5 inch drive bay. So I'm gonna do that right now. So it looks all pretty for you. Um, Am I able to get that to sort of hook and stay without uh, wire ties or the like, or without damaging the braiding? The answer seems to be pretty much a yes. It's not really in the way of that drive now. So there we go. My problem is I pulled on it a little bit, so obviously that became unseated. Okay, drive is seated, power is on, nothing is impeding airflow to the chassis fan. This is all above it. I'm ready to 
light this thing up, which I'm going to go ahead and do on camera just in case there are LEDs on the card. Okay, there are no LEDs of any kind on this card. And you just heard the bias boot sequence finish with the beep code of everything's happy. So now ESXi Hypervisor is booting, ESXi 6.5. And we'll have a look at how things look. Uh, we already know I need to go in to change that bifurcation setting, which is on by four by four by four by four. And we'll see how it goes as far as recognizing the drive that is now attached. My very first test of the 900p.